There are plenty of challenges to making a building in Second Life. We could talk philosophy and workflow for probably an hour. But one thing that all creators have to face along the way is physics. Physics is probably one of the topics that come up on the forums the most often. How can I get in my door? It doesn't do you much good to make a house if you can't walk in the front door. And it's really not handy when you res something on the floor and it turns out to be in the middle of the room. So let's see how we can work around that. A house is a big project, so rather than do a step-by-step, -step, which we would probably all get very tired of watching, I've taken some screenshots along the way in my project that I was working on yesterday, and I will explain a little bit about what's happening there. To start out with, though, let's look at the simplest doorway you could possibly make. Well, pretty close, anyway. If you take that simple doorway DAE file and you upload it on the beta grid, and then you try to walk through the door, you can't. You can analyze it, you can use the highest physics, and you still can't get through the door. One thing that you always need to remember, and it's hard at the beginning, is that for a doorway or even certain shapes of rooms to work, they have to be changed from convex hull to prim in the features tab. And then you can walk through the door. This is a little shotgun house that I was working on yesterday. I have the downstairs made with the openings for the windows and the door. There's a stoop in the front and a stoop in the back. So there are two doorways and five windows. Now we don't have to worry about the windows for physics because we aren't going to be climbing through those windows. But we do need to make sure that we can walk in through the front door and walk out the back door or the other way around. Now I could upload each wall individually. I could upload all the walls together and the floor separate. I could make the stoop separate. I could put it all together. That's all a choice that a creator makes when they're making their mesh. I've decided on this model to do all the walls together along with the floor and the stoop. And that's the physics model we're going to be making. This is a cube style physics model and we will be analyzing the mesh when we upload. There's another way to do it and we're going to talk about that later. This method works both in Second Live and on OpenSim and it's the one I've been using forever, hence this is the one that we're going to use. In cube physics it's very important not to have the pieces touch. So you can see on this close-up here that I have taken cubes, I've resized them, I've sort of done puzzle pieces around my house in progress and I've made sure that I left space in between each piece. While I was making these screenshots, I noted that there were lots of materials listed on the right hand side. Note the misspelling. Uh, I, I also realized that I hadn't explained to you that you can only have eight materials per mesh in your mesh. Now that wasn't important when we were making a picture frame or table or most furniture, but when you get into houses you may actually be using more than a few materials. If you try to use more than eight materials, the uploader in Second Life kind of decides on its own what to do and divides your mesh for you into pieces so you definitely don't get what you want. It's much better to plan ahead and do it with only eight materials or divide the mesh into pieces which is what I usually do. Here's a close-up of the stoop. I put one in the back too of course because there's a stoop back there and I also added a floor. The ceiling for this is going to be part of the roof piece when I get to that. Once you have your mesh physics made, you need to apply location and rotation and scale and transform the origin to the geometry. Hopefully you've been doing this on each and every mesh, but it's really important when you get to physics models, so don't forget to do that. You want to export each piece separately. They should be joined and each would be a single mesh. 
and it's important that you have a hint in the file name so that you'll know which is the physics model and which is the regular house. Over on the beta grid, I uploaded the house model and used the default settings for the level of detail. Later, I upped the second LOD higher so that it would have better viewing at a longer distance. In the physics tab, I chose the physics model that I made. When you first attach the physics model to your regular model, it will look yellow in the viewfinder preview. Uh, at least in Firestorm. After you hit the Analyze button in the Physics tab, it will turn to pink and blue, and so you'll be able to tell the difference. Once you res your building, you're going to need to change it to Prim. Remember, we did that at the very beginning. And then you can test your building by seeing if you can walk through the doors and out the doors, and if you can res a cube in the floor. It's also good, depending on the bill, to walk around and make sure that you can walk into the corners and that you do get stopped and not walk through something. You also have the option of using planes for physics and then you do not analyze. Here's a list of some of the differences and I strongly encourage you to explore both kinds and see which works better for your bills. Also, right now, cube physics is the physics that's needed in some open sim grids, and plane physics will not work. There's major issues there that may be fixed in the future. It may not be fixed, so we don't know. So be sure and test that if you happen to be in open sim. Also, right now, the Firestorm viewer has not been able to upload cube physics correctly. Sometimes you get a warning. It depends on the viewer version that you're using. Sometimes you don't, it just doesn't work. So to get around that, you can use the Linden Viewer, which does indeed work for cube physics, or you can use plain physics if you do not want to use the Linden Viewer. Those are your choices, and hopefully that will all be fixed in the future. Next, I made the roof and the ceiling and uploaded that separately with its own physics model. This physics model was much simpler. It was just made up of two cubes. You can see that when I baked my textures, I had several different things overlapping each other. And you can do that by designating different textures that you'll be baking to. I did that with the roof too. The roof all fit on one piece, except for the ceiling, and it's on another one to be added to later. There's lots of different ways you can bake, and you have to figure out your own best method. After you get your build up in world and all put together and looking good, be sure and test your LODs again. Hopefully you did that when you were uploading so that you don't have to upload again. But it's always good when you're finished to do it one more time. Next up, we're going to work on the trim for the corners and the door. <laughs> 